Welcome to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. We're going to take a look at what we mean by stranded data and a prime example of that is an intelligent electro-pneumatic valve positioner and uh, of course we're going to look at the, the Siemens PS2. So what we have here is PCS7. This is the dedicated Citrans library faceplate for the PS2. So on here I can write a set point and it will um, move it to that position manually. Now I don't need any PID control to do that because the valve positioner has PID control built into it. It uses a piazzo uh, valve type arrangement so when it gets to its steady state it doesn't bleed any air. So you can see on the right hand side there typical um, air consumption savings that you will make on one valve. So there's a bit of diagnostics um, on this uh, block, but it doesn't go into what we class as uh, intelligent instrumentation diagnostics. That's all contained within the PS2. So the PS2 has built-in loggers. So I'm going to go to the hardware screen. So here's my PS2. This one is actually on my Profibus PA network, but it could be one on a heart connected to heart pass through IO, it doesn't really matter. The diagnostics logged within the device are the same. So this PS2 isn't the brand new one with the built-in uh, pressure uh, transmitter, so you just have to bear that in mind. There's a, a newer um, PS2 on the market. Here we have uh, PDM open and as you can see uh, this section under maintenance and diagnostics there's various different um, diagnostic features that I can enable or disable. Uh, I've kept it pretty simple. Um, I've got a few here. So general fault of the valve is enabled. Pneumatic leakage. As I said, during a steady state, we don't leak any air, so we can actually monitor for leakage. Um, dead band uh, monitoring. And um, the stroke interval, that's just a, a counter. So you could put alarms on that. And then we're doing the average position. So if we have a look at the, the diagnostics on the instrument, so the first thing that we can have a look at is the alarm logbook. And if you open this up, you can see during the, the, the life of this um, uh, valve positioner, you can see some uh, pneumatic leakage alarms, um, general control uh, alarms, uh, and, and they're pretty close together, these, so you would... Uh, assume that the leakage alarm has caused it to, to fail to go to its position. We've also had some power problems where it's gone on and off. So we can see that that's nothing unusual. What it also does is logs those positions and this is where it becomes stranded. Of course no PDM is on stranding that data and I can, I can have a look at a few things. So let's start with the uh, his, history grams. Um, First one is position, and this is just telling you for the lifetime of the valve where it spent most of its position. So zero to 100%, this is actually a rotary valve that we're monitoring here on a, on a Bray actuator. Uh, then if we have a look at control deviation, I can see here where um, most of my deviation has been. On top of that, it's also uh, logging the trends for the diagnostics I've set up. So if we have a look at the control deviation, what you can see here are your, are your alarm set points. So green, amber, red. So the, it will automatically learn these. And the blue line is my actual value. So you can see over here over 30 minutes and we can go to, to 30 days. So I can see again, I've had some, some issues with control deviation. If I then have a look on here, I've got leakage. A leaking valve can cause us a couple of problems. Uh, the first one is, you know, you're trying to drive it to a set point and hold it at that set point. Your, your external PID or the valve positioner's internal PID will, will obviously be trying to maintain that. And as I said, at its steady state condition, it shouldn't be hunting. It will go to that position. But if you've got an air leak, it will be hunting up and down, trying to maintain that position. 
So you, you're, you're using more air, which means you're losing more money. And we're not actually looking at the, the other uh, side effects could be a uh, breakdown in the quality of the product that you're making. But again, I can see here over 30 days that I've had some leakage alarm issues. And if I was to overlay those with my control deviation, I wouldn't be surprised that those two coincide. We need to uh, automate this data collection and that's what, what uh, digitalization is all about. The data is in the field. I don't want to have to come along and manually do this. I want the, the data to be sucked out of the instrument, sent to a cloud platform where it analyzes that data and puts it into English uh, for me so I can understand what I need to do. As I alluded to, what we're trying to do is to get this intelligent data up to a platform that can analyze the, the log data over prolonged periods. So what we're trying to do here is really predict when a valve is going to, to fail. That is what is classed as preventive maintenance. Um, so what you can do to establish preventive maintenance is just maintain the valves all the time and that comes into the category of unnecessary maintenance and that again can be costly and time consuming. So this is where we can push the data off to the, to the cloud. The data is constantly being recorded and measured by the valve positioner so it's not something we do once every six months and then analyze the results. It's happening all the time every day. If you've got a steady state valve then we can do things like partial stroke tests and analyze that data um, but really this is for control and modulating valves. To get at the data it's very similar to, to the uh, smart asset monitoring app that I've covered on previous blogs. So what we have is an engineering operation station. Now if that's PCS7 version 9 service pack 1 and above, we can have PDM maintenance station installed on that. So it's all on one ES. If it's not and you don't want to do an upgrade or you've got a um, different PLC, so it could be a Rockwell or something here, but you, you have an intelligent network, then we can use PDM standalone maintenance station. And that will allow us to uh, record the data from the PS2, in this case, on a timed basis. So once a day, it will pull out all of that uh, trend data that we've already looked at with PDM, store it in here. It will send it to the cloud via another piece of software called Data and Security Gateway. And what this is doing is grabbing the logged files as an XML format and sending those securely to the MySphere platform where the Valve app is hosted. If we take a look at the Valve app, um, this is recorded data. So what we're trying to do here is not pick up those instantaneous alarms. Maintenance station is going to do that for you. What we're trying to do with the, with the app is to try and um, figure out when this Valve needs maintaining. And this is what you can see in front of you. So we have a total of 100 valves. We have 347 open cases and none of them are managed. Like I say, it is data from a plant, but it's not live data. So, um, And on each one of these, I can go to each valve and I can see the anomalies that it's recorded. So direction of changes is, is a nice easy one. So here it's decided that it, it's had too many direction of changes. And that will be a, a value that's stamped on the side of the valve. And I'll... I'll show you how to, to set that in a minute. Uh, there's quite a few here so we can see here slip stick so this is when the valve is sticking at a certain va position uh, you might have this on, on, on a ball valve for instance or a butterfly valve where it's just rubbing the outside of the casing and then all of a sudden it frees and you get this jerking motion on the valve again difficult to control around that set point but the, the valve positioner is monitoring that and of course um, position deviation so you've asked it to go to a certain position and for some reason it hasn't hasn't reached that so I can see all of my anomalies there uh, in plain text for, for each alarm if I want to go into this in more detail so this specific valve I want to get to the bottom of it and see what's going on then I can go and overlay my, my KPI 
uh, information. So I've got my valve, max deviation. I might want to have a look and see if that is a leakage that's causing that. So I go to my pneumatic leakage and I can go to, um, I might want to have a look at slipstick as well. So if I have a look at that, I can see that around this control deviation alarm, I've actually got also two or three leakage alarms. So straight away, rather than going out and having a look and buying all the mechanical parts for that valve, I can make a decision, well maybe let's go and check all the plastic or stainless steel or copper hosing, whatever you've got, and make sure we've got no leaks uh, on the mechanical connections going into to my actuator. Okay, So I can make some decisions. If I see that valve as being critical, then I can mark, mark it as critical. So what we mean there, if this valve fails, I, I could potentially stop my plans. I can put some notes in here and then I can schedule this for, for maintenance and I can say on here check be checked by vendor or miscellaneous in this case and put some notes so check air supply and save that the information for the PS2 is here so all your serial numbers and everything for, for the PS2 are located there so that's an overview of each uh, device um, you have your histograms there as well look so this is basically if we go back to, to the PDM view where I was showing you the actual position where this has been sat you can see this particular valve has spent most of its time at the 20% uh, position so the next thing you want to set is you might want to fine tune some of your threshold settings. So if I select my valves, these are already set for you, but you might have some here switching cycles where that value is stamped on the valve. Well, you can go through each valve. You can see the valve there and the location on your site and you can fine tune these. Once you've set them, they will then go onto the custom threshold setting. So it's nice and simple to set some, of your, set some of your thresholds. Under here I will have alarms so I can suppress these alarms if I want and I can add devices to watch lists. So if I have a repeat offender I can put that in a watch list so I can quickly filter on that but it also um, means that uh, it brings it to my attention more often. So now it has all the data it can start to make some informed decisions about when it needs maintenance and what you do with the app is you program in your maintenance schedules you can see here I've had one in January one in April and one in July and what you have to do the app is making the decisions for you it is auto optimize right? and this is where it's important that you've clicked those critical ones because it will it will move those around so now you've got your schedule uh, set out for you and I, I can see um, that maybe that I've got two valves exactly the same and I'm getting a vendor out to, to look at one I might as well get them out to do two to save on my call out uh, charges so I can move these around and put them into different schedules quite easily over here I can see these ones it's quite happy with and it hasn't put those into any of my schedules of course that's what you want to see on your plant what I can do then is this request maintenance button can link to your top end system so that might be for, for example a Comos Siemens Comos or it could be something like SAP so if we go back to the main screen uh, a real simple to use app it does most of the calculations for you if if you do want that extra bit of help then you can get a, a maintenance contract with Siemens and you'll see here under service and support you can download your log files and, and send those off to to the support team under these other settings you can decide what you want to ignore so here under your KPI settings it's similar to when we looked at PDM on the PS2 all of the settings here so you can ignore slipstick if you wanted to for instance as one of your KPI settings so there we have it the Siemens uh, valve positioner app 
uh, designed for electro pneumatic valves and of, and of course it's the perfect partner for the Siemens PS2 valve positioner but it is open and you can put other electro pneumatic valve positioners into this um, we just might need to to contact Siemens in advance so they can map in the uh, diagnostic parameters so I hope that was useful thanks for listening don't forget to click that like button tell your friends to subscribe tell your colleagues to subscribe to keep this channel going and I do appreciate your support and thanks for tuning in